Hey, me, Makari, you, join Discord and Twitch. Hey, thanks, bye. This video is called Why Trends Are Getting Shorter. Uh, this is by uh, Future Proof, which are pretty well known for making very well produced analytical pieces. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to talk about the uh, overwhelming, uh, the overwhelming uh, overtakement of uh, social media and the constant need of being over over overly stimulated and the constant need for easier, faster, more effective dopamine hits. But I guess we'll see what they say. ...span has been shrinking by the minute, and the cultural landscape has shifted to match it with trends like Stanley water bottles, tote bags, and those weird big red boots. You mean to tell me these weren't a joke? These Looney Tunes looking pieces of crap were actually a real? <laughs> coming and going before people even knew what color to buy. The speed of our trends is at an all time high, but with all the rush. I'm going to TLDR this entire video. Why are trends getting shorter? Because access to the internet gives people much easier access to consumption. The more people consume, the faster they want it. It's human psychology. People want dopamine. People want happiness. The easier and more accessible dopamine is, the more they want it and the quicker they want it. Because we are a society of ever-demanding individuals. And when we want something, we always want it more and easier. And that's, the, that's, that's literally the short of it. Rush, where exactly I'm sure he'll describe going? it in more detail. Now, if you are just a smart person who subscribes to this YouTube I hate that this video called me out. <laughs> knows a thing or two about the world that we live in today. I've been playing with a Rubik's Cube this entire time. <laughs> and consumption habits were created in the wake of social media and the internet. And you are pretty much right. But there is a lot more to this story than that. Trends have actually been an integral part of the fashion and cultural zeitgeist for decades, but how we've interacted with them and defined them has changed a lot. It and to that, I would also say that trends have become much more uh, publicly aware. Like trends used to only be something that were hyperbolic to very specific genres and niches, whereas now trends are something that are seen as a social standing. You see trends as a way for the regular uh, Tom, Dick and Joe, nine to five blue collar person to have an opportunity to make it into a social, a better social standing. Like, whereas back in the day, trends were something that fashionistas would follow so that they could get higher standing within the fashionista world. Now, trends with like TikTok, YouTube are a way for uh, the regular working blue collar person to break out of their mold and make a higher standing for themselves. And the reason why trends are getting shorter is because it's become more accessible, because it's become more visible, people are much more desperate to try and make something work. And when there's so many people oversaturating something, uh, it's much more quickly going to burn out because we're much more overstimulated with that trend. So people have to very quickly try and find a new trend to uh, make themselves stand out from that previous trend. You see, I know psychology. Trend, according to the literal dictionary on my parents' shelf, is a general direction and tendency of events and opinions, etc. Which makes it sound extremely boring and honestly might indicate how much trends have changed since this old ass dictionary was in use. <laughs> Which actually, dude, I'm pretty sure I had that dictionary in my high school. For most of human history, trends evolved very slowly. Well, psychology, this human is studies, really that obvious when you look at broad, the broad strokes of a things. particular decade. It's why the 50s were human so distinct from you will. the 80s, for example. Which or boils down to a little bit more nerdy about here, how the brain works. a difference between the Victorian or Regency periods in the 19th century. Our writer oh, yes, Marjorie. So we're going to all have a nice time with our fashion pants. In I mean, it's not wrong though, think about it. Like, back in ye olde days, the trends were to wear, if, if you were of royal decree, you would wear fancy colours and have certain, uh, you, you would follow the trend of your, uh, your royalty. Oh, what's that? The royals are wearing gold with purple highlights, then I suppose we shall wear gold with purple highlights because that's the trend they're setting.
In the fashion world, there is a pretty typical trend cycle, and it has five stages. Introduction, <laughs> rise, <laughs> peak, decline, and then obsolescence. This usually would happen over the period of... I would almost say, actually, there's even more of a way of breaking this down. You have introduction, rise, peak, and then you can break away from this with innovation and uh, sort of caveats and uh, sort of trends that were inspired from the original trend. Things that were evolved from the peak and the attention that was garnered. Obsolescence. This usually would happen over the period of 20 years or so. And this trend cycle... Ha! <laughs> 20 years? More like 20 days. Unless PewDiePie gets hold of it, in which case it's 20 seconds, but still. <laughs> ...reflect what is happening in the cultural, political climate at the time. For example, the feminist movement of the 1960s and 70s influenced fashion by promoting gender equality and challenging traditional gender roles. God, what is with the videos we're watching today? I just wanted to learn about gaming and trends, and you're giving me history lessons. <laughs> Please don't really too long. Please don't too dressed. long. Hoop skirts were out. Power I mean, suits were in. By comparison, the last video, at least this is thematically relevant. Women were rejecting restrictive clothing and embracing more comfortable and functional fashion choices because this shift in clothing reflected a broader cultural movement towards gender equality and women's empowerment. But here's the thing. That movement today would look completely different and might be completely missed by historians just trying to keep up with everything that's going on. Trends today are about speed, massive numbers, and selling things, most important. Damage, control, that's all aggression. that's possible because of the internet. This new uh -huh. world you know of I mean? accessibility cultural hot potato is being labeled as micro trends. That's when something becomes popular in a particular sphere of influence and lasts between a few months or even. True. Think about uh, Twitch trends, like the ASMR meta and the hot tub meta. Those are trends within a microchasm. Even just weeks. Now, an example of this that we covered on this channel was about the <laughs> Stanley Kelly got my reference. bottle. So if you look at Google Trends, you can see that the trend got a bit of a start in late November and was well on its way out of fashion by mid-January. Now, if you saw the video that we put out on this channel, we got it in just at the end of January, basically as the trend was already dying. The true peak of that insanity and yes, I'm still people playing were my losing their minds in stores <laughs> and people were talking about it online only really lasted from the- Look at uh, Supreme. Was it, even re was it even worth being relevant? Absolutely not. But Supreme became a trend, and thus people being sheep, they followed that trend end of December to mid-January. A two-week explosion of hype around a very specific product that has since basically been completely forgotten about. It must have, uh, Dan, that must have been a very big micro-trend considering I didn't even know these things existed. A very specific product that has since basically been completely forgotten about. We talked about this a little bit more in detail, specifically relating to the Stanley Tumblr on our Patreon exclusive podcast. So if you want- Wasn't this the, uh, the thing that was just terrible? ...and get some extra bonus content and early access to our videos, go and check I mean, I don't even know if I below. even heard of these things. ...in how we are able to create content Man, out of touch. for you. But all right, listen. To us, to a millennial like me, this just makes me think I'm out of touch, when in reality, it's just how like broad the, uh, and how fast moving the internet is these days. And that's a story about a water bottle, right? Not a fashion era. But this is increasingly what we're seeing with everything. Beauty, fashion, and even food is going in this direction. Trends are- oh, Do you want to know why? The reason why fashion was the trend in the past is because that was the only accessible medium that everyone had access to. Food was a scarcity and for, and for the lower spectrum of- for the, lo the lower financial- the lower- strokes of the uh social ladder so to say those who did not have the financial means they they didn't they couldn't get food so the only thing they could do that was trend setting was clothes something that was accessible to most whereas now most people have access to food most people have access to computers to fashion and the ability to make something a trend is indicative to the accessibility being determined by ever-changing algorithms and we're seeing That's an actually. erosion of subcultures that used to mark pop culture like hippies punks and even the emo kids of the 2000s what These do you mean emo kids of the past what the fuck does that 
Me? Excuse me? I'm 30 years old and I still abide by the emo fashion. Trends aren't based How on dare you? I'm in this video and I hate it. And so they're quick to change and they don't necessarily get the chance to grow into any kind of real cultural movement. The combination of the speed of the internet and modern consumerism means that the traditional trend cycle is on warp. Emo is a trend? It's honestly even hard to give examples. You sound like my mum. You, so you sound like my mum when I came out as goth when I was a kid. Oh, it's just a trend. It's just a phase. Yeah, it's a phase that's lasted 30 fucking years. <laughs> online lately because the birth and death of a trend lasts so fast and what we write about when we write this script might not even be relevant by the time we publish this video. But here's a couple of examples. Do you remember when everybody in apparently the entire world was obsessed with a viral feta cheese and tomato pasta? Ew! Dish? What about when everybody delicious, was making coffee or sourdough bread? Now maybe you didn't actually recognize any of the examples that I just nope. mentioned and that is actually not surprising. This is what I find really interesting about how the trends go by so fast these days, dude. I can't keep See, up with my. Trends I can't keep up with my mail, let alone the trends of the internet. Past were common across the board. You guys, are, do, do you guys notify society. know any of these Michael trends? Trends can specifically target certain people. What's trending in one corner of the internet? Oh, might my example of Twitch this is exactly what I mean. People, unless you were specifically part of Twitch, you would never have known about the micro trends of the ASMR trend or the hot tubs trend, that kind of jazz. Hyperbolicness is what we call it. Not be what's trending in another corner of the internet, of course. And this has much bigger implications than you might think. For example, we are seeing the rise of- I'm gonna start my own trend with hookers and blackjack and, and, and weeks. cracked Last up white girls busting down sexual style. English woman. 2020 had cottage core and what could be more hyper specific- Cottage core? Fucking college core? You know, we truly do live in a society. We truly do. The, 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 the funny thing is, who the fuck cares? Dude, I don't give a shit about the trends. I just want to play what I enjoy. I don't care about chasing trends. I don't care about being part of a trend. I just want to play the thing that activates my neurons. If, I, if, if the thing that's activating my neurons that day is drawing some fat titted anime waifus, that's all I care about. Do I care if it's a trend? Absolutely fucking lutely not. Specific Will trends potentially expose me to something that I might otherwise enjoy? Maybe, but I don't put that much weight behind them. Then Sandler core. You know, the trend Sandler where core. people were and slash are unironically dressing <laughs> like Adam Sandler. Dude, Adam Sandler in 2024 looks like the textbook definition of the dad having a midlife crisis. Look at this man, literally realizing he's hitting his 50s. He's trying to do every trend under the, under the sun. He's, he, know, he knows he's in his twilight years. He's got to try and do as much of his hobbies as possible. God. Terry Nguyen, a writer for Vox, said, Still not TikTok funny. Yeah, Vox no, that's true. Digital Has Adam Sandler ever really been funny? Serves them Other than maybe once or twice? Might not have known or cared Guys, if you can name me one person. time where Adam Sandler's been funny, he points out I'll that like your comment. subcultures have lost all meaning in an algorithm-driven landscape. What's left is trends that simplify everything into something viable. Dadcore? Yari, you say dad core and all I can think of is the category in Pornhub. <laughs> dad core? More like daddy core. Ugh. Instead of a kid dressing like a punk to reflect their desire to push against the system or express- Okay, but what about full grown adults that still dress like emos so that they can hold on to the window of nostalgia from their childhood so they can try and pretend that they're still in their youthful years whilst realizing that they're slowly aging and that the gray hairs are creeping in on their body and the only way they can pertain to any level of their youth is by emulating what they used to do back when they were a kid? Express <clears throat> a genuine part of their identity, they'll look like a punk for a couple of weeks because the look is having a moment on their side of the internet. And what this looks like on the consumer side of things is, say, Doc Martens blow up on TikTok. I have a distinct distastement for people who are trend followers. Be your own person. 
don't be what other people want you to be. Like the people who become transgender just because it's hip and trendy. Or trans trenders as they're called. Or the people who have no ident discernible identity of their own other than what is the most relevant trend. You. Sales go bananas and they start selling different products to meet this new surface level demand that's popped out out of nowhere. This is changing how brands- I would like to think that this is the perfect e uh, emphasis of uh, Joaquin Phoenix's We Live in a Society. <laughs> we truly do live in a society. Interact with the products that they make for their fans. And of course, we actually made a whole video- Oh, that's a whole different subject, Rory. I am not getting into that in uh, today's stream. In driven fashion world, if you want to see more about that. But what does this mean, okay? Like, what, what are we heading for if legacy brands are pandering to passing trends? If people are collecting water bottles that are designed for a lifetime of use just because they saw it blow up on TikTok? The truth is, the meaning, the context, and the mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. needed to develop the aesthetic of a decade is being lost in a digital age. Modern consumers are being bombarded with a never-ending yep, stream of inconsequential trends thought. to try and keep up with. Moments in a digital world that feel exciting and vibrant in the moment, but evaporate weeks later to reveal themselves as what they are, which is just marketing vessels for products that you simply- ah uh -huh. Funny how it all devolves back to uh, big name brands trying to market you their uh, trends. It's almost like the big name brands spend billions of dollars to worm their way into your social life, to make it seem like they know what is trip and trendy, to make you follow them like sheep, so that they can then capitalize on you buying things that are relevant to that very, very flickering trend don't need. Anna Angelique, a brand executive Once again, writes about live the in a society. sociology of business, has said that culture has decentralized. The center, the mainstream has disappeared. And I thought this was a really interesting way to put it. Nobody knows where they are on the spectrum anymore. Oh. That's why it's so hard to place what decade we're in when you look around at what's currently fashionable. This is a very fun concept to talk about because it's about the desensitization of the, our modern society. About how, because we have access to all forms of media, we have access to every form of uh, expression. Because the form of expression is so broad, there's no like identifying expression anymore. When you look in one place and the, identifiment, the uh, identification of that sort of area, could be entirely different to the say, to the identification of a area that's maybe five miles away, depending on what they have access to. There's no one. I mean, in some respect, this isn't even a bad thing because it's the way people can express who they are. But it's the uh, it's it's the result of how accessible things have become. Some people are dressing like it's the 2000s again, others are like in the 70s, and then you've got people dressed like they're living on a farm in the 1830s <laughs> and everything in between. It's everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes, Teenagers absolutely. are trying on digital aesthetics like clothing and accessories online, and then buying fast fashion to represent these tastes, swapping out ones that no longer fit their aspirational personality, style, or vibe, or whatever. And we've actually created whole websites just just to understand what the hell is going on and how we should be a part of it. Which is kind of, in, in some small ways, cool, right? Like, oh, it's we're cool! No longer <laughs> but it doesn't change how existential it makes you feel. Constrained to the look of a particular moment, and we can more freely express ourselves the way that we want. But no, don't you- I, 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 to anyone that's like a millennial, even in my lifetime, I'm 33 years old, even in my lifetime, things just feel infinitely more cluttered than they ever have done. Like, everything feels so much more muddy now than it ever has done. And I don't even see that as necessarily a bad thing, but it's very, uh, oh boy. Kind of gives you a moment of, mm, 
Sadly, for most people, it just means that we're shopping a lot more often to try and keep up. And the dark side of the trend cycle being shortened is that it is unarguably happening, at least in part, because of fast fashion brands and websites like Amazon and Timu. You can't reinvent yourself every two weeks without the lightning fast production times and fulfillment technology of modern capitalism. At the crux of this issue lies our inherent desire to overconsume. The act of constantly updating one's world. Yeah, to Rapscan, that's trend, exactly how I feel about it. While the life cycle. Ooh, cycles... those are some nice boots. Okay, I, I want those boots. Those are some nice looking boots. I want those boots. These trends are getting so short, ultimately leads to a closet laden with micro trend items that are no longer on trend, which leads you to then feel like you have, quote, nothing to wear. Oh, or Timo can a suck my dad. I, I hate Tumblr collection that you're never going to use. Those so kind of websites. We're, we're stuck. We're spinning in this world of trend meaninglessness, and we're just trying to figure out where it is going. A new trend life cycle has been born. One that is quickly slipping out of our grasp. A term or a product hey, pops off on TikTok. Fashion commentators and journalists and YouTube channels talk about it. And then it becomes a buzzword of a moment. Again, it's the overstimulation, the overexposure to media. And uh, think about it. The, the, I think a really good way of analogizing this is back in the day, if the queen wore something that was to be a trend, it would take months that trend to dilute itself across the country. You know, the transport of media, of knowledge, of, of news, of what's going on was slower because you had to wait for word of mouth to go by carriage, horse, foot, whatever. Whereas now, if something gets some, if something interesting happens that's worth being a trend, it's in your face instantly. So that cycle becomes much shorter because there's much less uh, travel time, if you will. And then invariably mentioning it in earnest a couple of weeks later becomes cringy. And what does this say about all of us? It's reflective, of course, of the real information age and the meaninglessness of the current state of the world. How do you distract yourself Whoa, from dude. the dwindling economy, the ending climate crisis, so and existential. the hellscape? You could just drown yourself in information, or you could go online and try out a new aesthetic for a couple of weeks. But thankfully, like all trends of the past, we are seeing a wave of people rejecting, or at least trying to reject this new cycle of- So what we're taking from this is, trends are cringe, be yourself, don't try and be other people. Cool, thanks buddy. Trends, and it's kind of awesome. Within a world of crazy hype nonsense, like, we not, have now this is This isn't exactly bad. It's just more indicative of our modern group society. Of social media users is urging Whoa, people to existential. whether they really do need those $350 jobs. $350? To look like you're a fucking Monopoly piece? I'm sorry, if you buy one of these, you are a fucking moron. Who the buying this shit. If you are the kind of person who buys this because it's a trend, you are what's wrong with society. You trend chasing, idolizing, star chasing piece of God damn. I, ooh, I honestly thought this was a meme from a, the Monopoly set. Giant red boots or the extra heavy weighted blanket that will apparently- Okay, the weighted blankets though are kind of goated, but you don't need to spend $200 on one. Just get yourself a poncho. Like, no cap. Get yourself a poncho. Ponchos are the best weighted blankets you will ever need. And they'll cost you $27 rather than $270. Better. And of course, this whole de-influencing thing might just be another trend that will bite the dust in a couple of weeks. But I really hope not, because in a weird sort of way, that's kind of what this channel is. <laughs> And so if you want to see more of our content, make sure that you like our videos and subscribe to our channel so that we don't die in the Yeah, let's not die. Woo! Content. But I also like We love not dying. My generation are kind of getting tired of this perhaps. I know for myself, I'm seeing more and more trends that I just don't need to be a part of at all. I don't know, maybe it's the dad in me coming out or maybe I'm just cheap, but there's not really many trends that I've Dude, fallen victim. I can barely afford rent, let alone keeping up with trends. I am so with this guy two in the last couple of years because I feel like I've gotten to know myself a bit better and I just know that I don't need- What he just said, that is a very interesting topic. How much of people following trends is just because they don't have any identity of their own? 
So rather than trying to figure themselves out, they just follow the trends to try and fit in with everybody else's identity. Tell me that doesn't make sense and doesn't corroborate the reason why most trends happen. Why put effort into knowing myself when I can just be someone else? Which is also a very good metaphor for VTubing. <laughs> Shit. A Bass Pro Shops hat to make myself feel like a real man. So wherever you are at in this trend cycle, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, remember to like well, it. Well, that was like one it. of the most existentially drive existential driving videos I've ever watched. And if you've had an existential crisis and you want to have some psychology treatment, comment down below and maybe I'll ignore you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Well, I promise we'll get back to more gaming in the future. Bye!